Welcome back. Yesterday we studied uh, the non-homogeneous boson process, also developed queuing theory notation, right? The slash notation. Uh, we will take a look at this mg infinity q as an application uh, which can be analyzed using non homogeneous boson process so the arrival process to an mg1q is of course a boson process of rate lambda so let us call this n of t so this is a homogeneous boson process of rate lambda customers arrive to this mg infinity q at rate lambda there are infinitely many servers right so there is no waiting no buffering right so as soon as a customer arrives she is just directed to the a queue that is a queue that is available sorry a server that is available okay there is always many servers there are so many servers that there is no waiting right there is always an available server for any arriving customer okay now the customers so customer service times are assumed to be independent identical distributed with cdf g of t okay so that means that if yi is the service time of ith customer then we have probability yi less than or equal to t is just g of t and y i r assumed to be i i d and independent of the arrival process n of t okay all right we also the the expected service time is is of course the same for all customers is taken to be 1 by mu all right where mu is called the uh, average service rate okay <coughs> so no matter which server the customer goes to his uh, service time the time he'll take to get service is some random variable yi which is iid okay this is the same across all servers identically distributed across all users okay independent of other customers and independent of the arrival process okay is the setup clear now it turns out that you can look at this uh, queuing process the number of customers in the system at any given time using this non homogeneous poisson process view viewpoint okay so you proceed as follows you take you take some time tau okay because you have all these arrivals right you take some time t and t plus delta so you look at the probability of having an customer arrived in t t plus delta and still in service at some time tau okay tau is bigger than t okay in this picture okay so this is nothing but the probability that there is an arrival
टी कमा टी प्लस डेल्टा टाइम्स द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट द सर्विस टाइम ऑफ द कस्टमर बींग ग्रेटर दैन टाउ माइनस टी राइट बिकॉज अ कस्टमर अराइव्ड हियर एंड ही स्टिल इज इन द सर्विस राइट स्टिल इज स्टिल इन सर्विस सो हिज सर्विस टाइम मस्ट बी ग्रेटर दैन टी माइनस टाउ गिवन कस्टमर अराइवल इन टी कमा टी प्लस डेल्टा ओके दिस इज जस्ट आई एम राइटिंग पी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी एस पी ऑफ ए टाइम्स पी ऑफ बी गिवन ए राइट so the first this this guy we know which this is simply what is the probability of a customer arrival in t comma t plus delta it's a poisson process right so we know this is equal to lambda delta plus it low delta and the service time of the customer is independent of the arrival process okay so Conditioned on the customer uh, customer arrival being in t t plus delta, the service time distribution is the same as the unconditional distribution. Why? Because we have assumed this, right? That the service random variables are IID across customers and independent of arrival process. Okay, so this conditioning can be dropped. That's the basic point. So what what is the prob so unconditional probability of service time greater than tau minus t, which is equal to what i know this is the probability of a service time less than or equal to little t is g of t so probability that service time greater than tau minus t is 1 minus g of tau minus t correct this can simply be written as lambda 1 minus g of tau minus t delta plus little or delta okay now let us define a counting process n1t okay and this is defined from zero to tau okay so for each t n1 t is the number of customer arrivals in customer arrivals till time t that are till in service at time tau okay so n tau, n, n1 of t for t going between 0 and tau is the number of arrivals so you if you look at uh, some time t here you look at all the arrivals that have come till time t okay so that will of course in the original process that's you know what that is that's the total number of person arrivals in 0 to t but you are in n1 you are only looking at those arrivals which still remain in the system at time tau okay so you are throwing away those arrivals which are which have left the system okay so the the key argument is that from this above calculation if you look at this this is saying that the that the process n1t is like a non homogeneous poisson process okay whose lambda t is given by that expression lambda times 1 minus g of tau minus t okay is that clear uh, it's like we can draw a splitting picture which i will do uh, let me just do that right so you have it's like splitting so this is your original process okay this is n of t you are splitting that to keep 
those arrivals so we are keeping those arrivals which this is my n1 t okay this is everything is going from 0 to tau okay the consideration is from 0 to tau 0 to tau okay so let us call this n1 t this is some n2 t <coughs> okay so at each time t you look at the number of arrivals right you look at all those arrivals that have come to the system and if that arrival has left the system already after being served you send it down if the arrival is still in the system you send it up okay that is what you are doing okay uh, and you do you can look at this as the delta time slot picture also right. So, in each delta time slot if the arrival has come you send it up with probability 1 minus g of t minus tau right that is what is happening and send it down with probability so this is 1 minus g of t min tau minus t and this is g of tau minus t okay and you do this independently across all the arrivals because the service times are independent right are independent of the arrival process. Now, so this is like a Bernoulli split independent Bernoulli split except it is not a IID Bernoulli split the p is changing across time that is all that is changing okay. So, what can be easily argued is that while you get this expression for the probability of an arrival still being in uh, service it is also independent it also this n 1 t also has the independent increment property right like we just argued. So, we can it just follows from the definition of a non homogeneous Poisson process is that n 1 t is a non homogeneous Poisson process of rate lambda times 1 minus g tau minus t okay. So, this n 1 t for n 1 of t for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to tau is a non homogeneous boson process with the rate uh, the lambda t right which with lambda t equal to lambda 1 minus g tau minus t okay in all this you can think of this tau as being fixed okay you are fixing some tau right and you are looking only at the 0 to tau and you are looking at this interval 0 to tau and the counting process n 1 of t in this interval 0 to tau okay. So, I am putting lambda t within quotes because that is the you know the lambda t of that non homogeneous process okay. Clear? Yes. So, this splitting probability mm -hmm. between the splitting probability is the approach at which each uh, customer arrives. Uh, uh, essentially what I am looking at yeah so you are looking at the splitting probability being a function of t. See tau is fixed let us look at tau as being fixed okay. So, I am just thinking of this as some p of t okay. So, you you fix a tau you are looking at some time t let us say t t plus delta okay. Now, the coin toss is going up with probability p of t equal to all that 1 minus g of tau minus t all right. So, if there is an arrival in that little interval you will send it up with probability p of t and send it down with probability 1 minus p of t okay. So, this coin toss is an independent Bernoulli coin toss except that the probability of sending up or down is a function of time okay. If you if you want you just call this p of t equal to okay at each time t little interval t t plus delta I toss a coin independently not with probability p, but probability p t and if it shows head if there is an arrival I will send it up if there is an array if there is no if there is uh, no arrival of course I do nothing if there is an arrival and my coin shows uh, tail I will send it down okay. The coin toss is uh, I mean the head probability success probability depends on time 
that is all that is happening. Okay. It is no different from splitting a Poisson process except that P is P of T now. Okay. Well, now see that is uh, that is for this calculation, right? Yeah. So any t t plus delta. So I just calculated the probability that there is an arrival, and that arrival is still in the system. Yeah. That turns out to be like this. Okay, and it's independent across these little micro slots. Yeah. Correct, because the original proper original process has IIP, and these. Uh, this service times are independent across customers and you know independent of uh, arrival process. Therefore, all I am saying is that this is a valid way of looking at the system. It is as though I am tossing a coin. So, look at it this way right at every t t plus delta this micro slot I am tossing a coin whose head probability is p of t. Okay. If there is no arrival there is nothing to do at that time t t plus delta. If there is an arrival and if your coin toss this p t coin toss is a head you send it up, if it is a tail you send it down, okay. clear. If there is no arrival there is nothing to send up or down, right. So, you might as well say there is no coin toss right. or you can you can say there is always a coin being tossed with probability p t being head being p t. If there is an arrival I will act to split if there is no arrival I will do nothing. Okay. See all that is the same right from IID's Bernoulli splitting here it is independent Bernoulli splitting, but not the coin toss probability changes with time that is the only difference right. <coughs> so, this is this is all there is. Okay. So, now what is this n 1 tau? n 1 t is the number of arrivals in 0 to t which are still in the system at tau correct. So, what is n 1 tau? It is the number of arrivals in 0 to tau which are still in the system at tau which means it is the number of customers in the system at time tau correct, because n 1 t is the number of customers arriving in 0 to t which are still in the system at time tau. So, n 1 of tau is the number of arrivals in 0 to tau which are still in the system at time tau which is the number of customers in the system at time tau right correct. So, this n 1 tau will be Poisson distributed correct. So, since n 1 t is a homo non homogeneous Poisson process whose rate we know we can write this down. So, you can say thus probability that n 1 tau equal to n is simply your Poisson formula right which is m tau e power minus uh, sorry e m tau to the e to the minus m tau m tau to the n over n factorial correct for n is equal to 0 1 2 dot 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 where m tau is integral 0 to tau uh, lambda t right whatever lambda t is in this case it is lambda times 1 minus g I am just writing integral lambda t dt from 0 to tau correct. So, this just works out to be integral 0 to tau. So, you can make tau minus t is equal to s make that substitution and this just becomes 
lambda times 1 minus g of s ds all right g is known to you the cdf of service times is known to you so you can calculate this integral for any time tau you can calculate m of tau as this integral because g is known so m of tau simply gives you the parameter of the poisson pmf okay is that clear and of course expected what is expected n tau n1 tau it is the expected number of customers in the system at time tau correct which, which will simply be what is the expected value of a poisson pmf the parameter itself right in this case will be what m tau which can be calculated like so right is that clear so that's it so for any time really we can calculate the pmf of the number of customers in the system which is also the pmf of the number of servers which are occupied there are infinitely many servers of course the number of customers in the system is also the number of servers that are occupied it has pmf uh, this poisson pmf with parameter m tau and expected number of customers is also m tau okay any questions now it's interesting to look at what happens as tau tends to infinity okay so i am starting the system at zero letting it run for a very long time and i want to look at what happens to the occupancy of the system how many the pmf of the number of people in the system it is easy to show that what happens to so what happens to empty right happens to m tau so limit tau tending to infinity m tau is nothing but integral 0 to infinity lambda 1 minus g of s ds right now integral 0 to infinity 1 minus g s ds is basically the integral of the complementary cdf of the service time right the service time is of course a non negative random variable right and the integral of the complementary cdf of a non negative random variable is nothing but the expected value right so we can say recall that for a non negative random variable y we know this integral 0 to infinity probability y greater than little y dy is nothing but the expected value right so if you look at this guy uh, lambda if you forget the lambda pull the lambda out of the integral it is just a number you have integral 0 to infinity complementary cdf of service times uh, serv service time right so you get limit tau tending to infinity m tau is nothing but lambda times expected y i right I could just say expected y which is the yeah so this is the serve average service time which is nothing but lambda upon mu correct correct so after a very long time so at steady state so if you let the system run for a very long time so at steady state 
at steady state. What happens to this probability of number of people in the system, right? Uh, so, this is what I mean probability of n 1 tau is equal to n as n tends to infinity. n 1 tau is this guy right system occupancy this guy right. I am looking at the probability that there are n people in the system at a, after a very long time right will simply be e power minus lambda over mu lambda over mu whole to the n over n factorial correct. I have just written down what m tau is uh, for a very after a very long time ok. So, steady state means after a very long time the number of uh, the number of uh, customers in the queue is a Poisson distributed random variable with parameter lambda upon mu. Lambda is the arrival rate, mu is the service rate. Okay. See the cool thing about this result is that the distribution of the occupancy right the number of customers in the system depends on the service distribution only through mu ok. So, at any finite tau it depends on uh, that integral through I mean sorry it, dep it depends on the entire distribution correct. So, at any finite time tau the number of customers in the system is a Poisson random variable with parameter m tau given by that integral which generally depends on the entire service distribution. However, as tau becomes very large, so you look at the system in steady state, the form of g does not matter at all. Okay. What matters is the average service time or average service rate. Okay. So, this so if you have any m g infinity q, right, you have an m g infinity q with the service time whatever you like, but average service rate mu. And I have a different mg infinity q okay, with uh, the same mu same average service rate, but a totally different service distribution. For any finite tau our systems will behave differently, but after a very long time statistically they will be the same. Okay. So, this is a very non trivial result, but it comes out very beautifully from this analysis right. If you think about it we did not do anything I mean we just looked at it the right way right we did not do any uh, very heavy I mean we did not do anything very heavy analysis we just did this uh, splitting of Poisson process with this with this probability being a function of time and we said this models in mg infinity q and we got this very nice result right. So, so the moral right the steady state system occupancy system occupancy distribution of an mg infinity q does not depend on the form of the service distribution g. <coughs> so, it only depends on the average arrival rate lambda and average uh, service rate mu. Okay. Of course, for any finite tau, it depends on the g, but right, like like that integral says. But if you send tau to infinity, this form of g doesn't matter anymore. Okay. 
is that clear? All right, any questions on this? Interestingly, if you just look at the splitting picture wherever I drew it, yeah, this guy, if I look at the splitting picture, so this is a, we said this is a non-homogeneous Poisson process and likewise this is a non-homogeneous Poisson process, right. Now, by the same argument we used in the IID Bernoulli splitting, these two random, pro these two counting processes N1 T and N2 T will turn out to be independent. You remember when you, when you have an IID Bernoulli split, although they are coming from the same process, the up process and the down process were independent. The same argument goes through here, except this P is P of T now, okay. So, here too the up process N1 T and the down process N2 T are independent, okay, same argument. So, what does that mean? In an MG infinity Q, the number of customers at any given time the number of customers still in service is independent of the number of customers who have departed. Correctly the N2 T is what? The at any given time T the number of arrivals in 0 to T who have departed. N1 T is the number of arrivals in 0 to T who have not departed, right. These two are independent processes by this uh, splitting argument. So, very remarkably, so the number of customers still in the system is independent of the number of customers who have left the system. It is a very remarkable thing, right. So, this is only true, I mean this is not true in general, right. Generally, if I tell you that a lot of people just left, you may think that the queuing system has fewer people, but not true in an MG infinity queue, okay. It is a very highly non-trivial observation, it comes from the independence of the, the two split processes which itself is a non-trivial result as we, as we saw, right. Because of this little o delta business, you get this independence, okay. So, these two processes turn out to be independent. They are independent non-homogeneous Poisson processes, okay. Another beautiful property. Okay, so that uh, finishes our MG infinity Q discussion. Yes. Uh, uh, so, if you have two processes, uh, two, okay, lambda lambda one t of uh, lambda one t is of one uh, one process, lambda two of another process, they're independent. So, you work it out. So, the IIP will still follow. Yeah, it should be correct. It's correct, no? So, lambda one. Uh, I think what you're saying is correct. Just to verify it. Okay. So, you take two independent non-homogeneous Poisson processes. Uh, lambda 1 t, lambda 2 t, okay. Uh, the probability of having arrival in any one of them, uh, yeah, it, it seems, I think that is correct, what you are saying seems correct, okay. Do verify it, okay. IIP is of course true, SIP is anyway not there, right. Uh, 